Hey guys, thanks so much for all the comments that you guys leave. Go ahead and leave some more. Let's talk about more editing styles. Um, some links to uh, to what inspires you. Let's talk about it. All right, everyone. Welcome back. This is a uh, video four in our little zombie apocalypse scene that we're creating here. So far, we've just uh, gone through and laid some stuff down to a timeline. We've done some color correction utilizing the image effects tab and now we're going to be moving into uh, creating some graphics in this video and then future videos we're going i think the next video we're going to be doing some tracking and then uh, getting more into the comp the compositing of the the whole scenes um, so take a look at this first shot we're going to click on here and if you press q that will create another track so we're just going to bring this on up there i just want this first shot brought on up there i'm going to go here to the end I'm going to click on this little time indicator and I'm going to go plus 45. So 45 frames later, I'm going to drag that on down. This is thinking ahead in my edit. I'm going to do some tracking on this shot here, this shot here, this wooded shot. So I want to have actually more tracking data than what I need, just in case I need to do some revisions to it. And knowing that this point, this point here in the waveform, there's like a little, nice little, let's take a look, a listen to this here. Actually, you're not gonna be able to hear it, but take a listen to it. And there's a nice little transition point in there where the music kind of swells and stuff. I'm gonna listen to it real quick here. Yeah, it's like a the drums and stuff just kind of suck in on themselves. It's like a perfect little spot for a transition, but we're going to utilize that point. So that's why we just dragged out that, uh, that data there that shot so we can actually get tracking down on, on all that. But to do so, first we're gonna put a CG, a little text title into a, into the scene. So once we do the tracking, we can kind of see if the tracking is working properly for us. All right, so first we're going to put this shot into batch. So right now we have all these effects on there and we wanna transition all this into the batch work workflow. So I'm gonna click on effects and then here we want selection as flow graph. What that's going to do is put all those effects into a flow graph within batch. Click create batch. It says you're going to lose all your vertical compositing. That's fine. There we go. So here is our batch. We have our shot going into an image. That is our color correction going into a time warp going into that resize node that we went over in the previous video. If we double click on this image, that's gonna take us into that color corrector. And since you know we're not seeing that color corrector here, let's just utilize these arrows to shift into that master grade. So here's that master grade that we had created earlier. And that's how you kind of bring it on up. So take a look at that, that's our composition. We're gonna first wanna bring in an action node. So if you click on nodes, this is gonna be your action nodes. And then this effects nodes, this is the nodes for batch, so batch nodes. So if you press a letter, it'll highlight those nodes that are starting with that letter. So I pressed A, that brings up my action node. If I bring that on in, we have our action node right there. Let's go ahead and disconnect. I'm just clicking, dragging, and then disconnecting those nodes. If I hold down Option and click on a node, it'll select all those notes that precede it, and you can move those all around. With the action, we need to have a little a little uh, input for it. So let's go ahead and do Control N. That creates an input for us. If I hold down Shift, that'll connect it into that node, that resize node. If I hold down Option Shift, it'll give us just the front input. And then if I just toggle option again, it'll take us to the mat input, another way of connecting it. Here's our batch output. So this is the output going out to the timeline. I'm gonna hold down shift and connect it. Notice how it doesn't have an, a mat output. If you wanna turn on a mat output, double click on your action, go to outputs, and then here in render passes, you can turn on a mat output. We're just gonna go ahead and connect that on up too, just in case. This obviously is a, a full shot, so we're not gonna need the matte output of this, but um, a lot of times I'll do comping and, st and things with needing the matte output of the action. So I'm kind of, have been in the habit of always turning on the matte output. What I've done also is I've created a little user 
quick key call to action with mat. And I can just drag that on out. And basically all that has is the mat output turned on. Just click and drag that down here. That deletes it. I can also click on that and then press the delete key. And that does nothing. Delete key. No, that does nothing. You just got to click and drag it down here. Sometimes it works. Um, the, the delete key on my on my keyboard, I've got it set up for a, for a hot key on the timeline. So when I press it, it'll delete things. But within action, that doesn't work. If you want to go ahead and create a, an action preset, you can just click on this or any kind of preset and then just drag and drop it into there. You can name it and title it. Once you do, you hit enter and then it would just pop up and populate in your user tabs here. So there is our action. We're going to jump into action by pressing the, the ISCII key. What is that? The little key up in the top left of the keyboard, right underneath the escape. I forget what it's called. <laughs> and then here is our, our action. If I do spacebar A, that snaps it to everything that is in the action layout. So space A, space A is a good way of zooming back out. You can also do control spacebar and then click and drag to zoom in and out. And then just space bar gives you the hand and you can move around in your action. So I'm gonna do space A again. And then this is just showing me just my, my scene that's in there, just my shot. So we're going to want to add a graphic in here. So I don't wanna do graphics from effects nodes because this is for batch. So if I hit T for text and drag that on in here, it doesn't show me anything. So there's nothing there. It won't allow me to drag it. Here's, here's the, the node I bring in here. It won't allow it. I got to do an action node. So instead of T for text in action, it's actually a 3D compositing tool. So we're going to do 3D text. I'm just going to drag that on into here and open it up. Here's our text. Okay, so we're going to double click on that. We're going to click on font. And that's going to load us into our fonts. It defaults into the, uh, the the path for all the discrete fonts. If you need to actually find all your system fonts, just go ahead and navigate to that by going, you know, folder up and then navigate to library fonts. That's where all mine are. Uh, you can use this little search tool. We're going to make this first CG, just impact. So I'm going to type in impact in there and it's going to show us that. I'm going to select it, click load, and there's our title. If I want to adjust the size of it, I can just type in here what I need it to be. I can scroll and just make it bigger. If we need to make it extruded, we can go ahead and extrude it here. But we're not going to extrude it. We're just going to leave it flat. Um, let's do this. So how about we're going to do, are you scared? So we're just going to type in scared is going to be our keyword here. And then if we want to duplicate this, we're going to go ahead and select by control selecting on the axis. So the axis is just like a little DVE or a 2D transform to move things around. So you can just move it around however you see if we extruded it here, then we can move our axis and see the extrusion to it. So that's kind of nice that the access actually recognizes that extrusion. That's one of the things that Avid DS didn't do. Um, if you had something extruded in the 3D environment and then you wound out to uh, actually manipulate it with a DVE is what they called it, and that instead of 2D, 2D transform, um, it actually wouldn't recognize the 3D uh, extrusion of that, which was kind of a downside to it. You'd have to be in the 3D environment to be able to do that. Uh, I guess, you know, Flame is, is the same way. If I jumped on out to the timeline and did a 2D transform out there, that wouldn't recognize the 3D-ness of that. You'd have to manipulate it within the 3D environment of action. Okay, so back onto this, we're going to option click to select both of those nodes, control D to duplicate, or you can option click, right click, and then go into duplicate right there and shows you a little hotkey right there. We're going to do this. How about we change this font to something a little thinner, just kind of throw it on up there. Um, I've got this interstate font that I like for this. And there it is, interstate. How about italic? That would be good. So we're going to change this to are you, are you scared? I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. 
click on the access so we can move this on up. I'm going to do control space bar so I can zoom in. That's one of the nice things. The control space bar works on any of these windows and then space bar to, to slide around with our hand. Just kind of do that. I do space bar A to zoom back out. This is zoomed out so far because of how we are viewing it. So it's viewing perspective right now. Whoop. I'm going to go to view current node and then I'll zoom out to just the shot. So that's that. All right. So that's making a 3D graphic within action. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and, and apply a material to it and go over a couple different ways of, of uh, applying materials to this and changing the colors of it um, and kind of make it form into the scene a little bit better. We'll see you in the next video. Check out my band page, Fade to Black, on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, and everything else. Hey, check out the links below. We got a Patreon account. Check it out.